You're tuned in to RX Radio. Movement prescribed. Brought to you by Prescript.com. A personalized approach to keeping you healthy and making your best even better. Your hosts, Dr. Jordan Shallow and Dr. Jordan Jinta. offensive part of the podcast yeah all right let's what? try and keep what that, that? Too let's try and keep talk to the foot the armpits don't want to hear it <laughs> <laughs> all right then wow yeah i just, we got us we got to tone it down on the feet thing too much feet i don't we live too close to san francisco that's <laughs> all I, was, I don't feel safe anymore <laughs> It's just uh, walking around in public. I already know what a Twinks is now, and I, so I could have lived seven lifetimes without knowing what that is. Yeah. I don't know what that is. It's concerning. You're just coming in a little low. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn you up a bit. I like uh, to I like to hear you. Uh, um, but yeah, no, there's there's whole subcategories of of things and and, and otters and otters. Yeah. <laughs> you Mar- see Mark is laughing in the background because he lived here for a while. Okay. He knows the ins and outs. There's there's websites, oh, no. there's get, apps get, for this stuff. I'm I'll just get, saying, keep the feet to a minimum if we I'll could. Get, I'll get on Google. Yeah, uh, you might want to clear the old, do it on an incognito tab if, <laughs> if, you, if you feel me on that one. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're going to learn a few things, oh, man. things you didn't need to know. Um, you walk down Castro Street and you you, you hear a thing or two. All right. um, so I was on YouTube the other day, and it's amazing to me. Uh, I'm not I'm not concerned about artificial intelligence because the intelligence we currently have, eh, it's, it's a little bit lacking. Okay. So like, there's an algorithm. Like we were talking about this earlier, where you know you'll be having a conversation and maybe about a product or something you bought, and the next thing you know, it'll be on your Instagram account, right? And there's there's algorithms and there's pixels and all this stuff that that make this happen and i'm sure the nsa is driving it and it's one dark snowden driven machine or well, however that works i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about as <laughs> bark bites on his lip <laughs> um point being is like things that get marketed to me i feel like i'm i'm grouped in the wrong demographic online like there's an algorithm that just missed me altogether like oh he likes lifting weights here he must like this supplement and it's like i came across it was the beginning of a youtube video so it was like paid ads, obviously, at the beginning of the YouTube video. And it was one of those, you could, within three seconds or five seconds, you click to the video. And I was so enthralled with this car crash of an advertisement. I watched the three and a half minute video on the supplement. To, so like the second they say the master fat burning hormone, I was like, oh, fuck, I got to go get some popcorn. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going to be the best thing I've watched all day. And I'm just sitting there. And, the guy, and I didn't get to the bottom of what the actual supplement was, like what the main, like, bioactive ingredient was or anything like that but he was selling you on that the main fat burning ingredient was norepinephrine it's like oh okay i've seen the movie crank right with jason statham (laughs) where he's just like fucking shooting into his heart it's like i don't know if that's the best way to go the old pre-workout route just like yeah you know sister's EpiPen, same shit that's all we're selling (laughs) just like what the fuck are you talking about the Oh, so here's a red flag. If you're ever wondered about the driving force or efficacy behind a supplement company, the word nutraceutical, run. <laughs> Just fucking run. Like, this is the FDA is going to be kicking doors down in about six months. 20 kids in Hawaii are going to have a heart attack because they OD'd on this stuff. Oh, nutraceutical shit. is the biggest red flag in the supplement industry. <laughs> Hands down, bar none. Oh, but yeah, yeah and, and don't take norepinephrine. For a pr- unless you're in anaphylaxis, norepinephrine, maybe not your best fat burning um, pre workout supplementation. Have you seen the protein Tide Pods now? <laughs> what? Yeah, are dude. you serious? I think they saw the whole thing like kids are eating Tide Pods and they just really took it to the bank. And oh, yeah, you're all right. You're all right. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> doing, I'm messing with and some And they things. have these like little pods of protein where you just like, if you're too dumb to use a scooper, Take one of these pods and, and you put drop it in, in water, yeah. and yeah. then put yourself in 
a, a laundry machine and kill yourself. Because <laughs> if we can't figure it out, man, we're we're in for it. That's um, I never got it, and that's funny because I have Tide Pods now, like in my place, and I look at it going. Who in the fuck would ever do this? Like, back in my day, some of the, like, random food challenge stuff, like the Mentos Diet Coke thing. Oh, yeah. Seen it. Yeah. Like, not, like, Mentos into Diet Coke. Like, Diet Coke into mouth, Mentos into mouth. <laughs> Imagine what happens in the bottle, but coming out of someone's mouth. That's pretty awesome. It was tremendous, but it was funny. Acids, yeah. bases, chemistry, all that. Vomit, shit everywhere. <laughs> Not like, hey, if you know if you eat cinnamon, you'll <laughs> die. Really? Die? Here, give me that. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? Like, I'll never understand, like, the anti-intelligence movement in this time. I don't want to say country because I'm sure it's across the board. But, like, I don't even see the appeal visually to going, yeah, this seems like a good idea. Man. Can you explain that? No. I mean, have you ever had Gushers? Okay. Yeah, I have. That's the closest thing I could relate it to. But, like, laundry detergent smells good, but not, like, good, I want to eat it good. Yeah, like... Good, like, I want to smell like this good. Yeah. We're rarely rarely the same thing. Yeah. I don't go, hey, you know, ribeye. You know, that's what I want to... I'm going to put on some of that. I don't know, man. Maybe the Twinks might disagree, (laughs) but... Did I, did I use that right? Chris, I, th- <laughs> I think you used that but perhaps too right. But yeah. If, I don't know. I feel like I would not turn down the scent of ribeye on a human. I, I don't know. I, it's, I, don't, I, I don't get people. <laughs> I don't get people that go down that route. What was the other one? Wow, there was another like food challenge thing that was killing people. Uh, people always find a way. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's a segue into what we were talking about. <laughs> well, kind of. I don't know. To me, it's kind of stupid to jump back and forth between programming a little bit. Right. Um, I got a few questions, and then we can suitcase this whole thing. So power building. Power building. Power building. A mixture of. Crossover training. Like, how do you switch from bodybuilder, powerlifter, powerlifter, bodybuilder, Olympic lifter, crossfitter, crossfitter, bodybuilder, whatever. So, like, we would have all these divided camps of exercise. Um, and what are some maybe some advice, things to look out for, considerations to be made when you – switch up your training full stop yeah because you i mean you've done this a few times yeah i think originally we've all done athletics Mm -hmm. to barbell sports Mm -hmm. like that's your first initiation into the into the game is okay most people that get into barbell sports have a background in normal air quote normal sports right Right. you were a wrestler played hockey at some point we transitioned what was your transition like from training for wrestling to training for training it, at first, it wasn't much different. I would just do more. More? Yeah. So, I don't know. More, but less. I was that just... Okay, now let's do it this way. That's... Your training back then was not smart. <laughs> so, you just had more not smart training. In retrospect, if you were to look <laughs> back, knowing what you know now, right. how would you go from training someone for conventional sports to training someone for barbell sports, regardless whether they want to be a power builder, power lifter, crossfit, right, Olympic lifter? Right. Um, yeah, sports specific should be exactly that, sports specific. You're not training in the gym to get good at training in the gym. You're training in the gym to get good at what your sport is, whatever that may be. Um, so a lot of agility, jumping, maybe plyometric, explosive training, change of directions, things like that, um, which don't transfer as well to being strong as they might to other sports, right? Um so then the transition is going to be taking that and funneling that athleticism back into um, sports specific for strength sports, whether that's, you know, if it's uh, bodybuilding. I don't know if that's a strength sport, more of an aesthetic sport. Is I don't know. You're the bodybuilder of the group, man. <sighs> that So I guess that gives me the right to talk as much shit as I want. Yeah, without <laughs> knowing literally <laughs> anything about bodybuilding. Yeah, exactly. Literally nothing. You've been lean and spray tan once uh-huh. with a bodybuilder yeah. of the three of us to, in the room. You have to put a razor blade in places that you never want to put a razor <laughs> blade <laughs> to be that's, a bodybuilder. That's really splitting the atom down <laughs> there, man. You, know, you do it right. <laughs> yeah, sure, twinks, but you do it the wrong way. <laughs> Look out. Oh, man. I feel so left out. That's, I don't know what twinks me. Oh, uh, you're good for a Google search, my friend. Yeah, don't I, go down the rabbit hole because I'm sure there's the. that's only three names. There's more. Yeah. I, it's, it's, I'm reluctant to call something where – have you seen those paint brushes? That where are you going with the it's stuff? Not, it's not a brush. <laughs> it's just like a like a sponge. Yeah. With a, with yeah. Point. It's like maybe to do corners or edging. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you have one of those on your taint and it's a <laughs> – 
a prerequisite. It's not exactly a Bob Ross episode, <laughs> is it? We're just going to put a bush right here. <laughs> yeah, if, and, and that's a prerequisite for your sport. I'm hard pressed to call that a sport. It's fair. It's a lifestyle, bro. It's a lifestyle. You wouldn't understand. Yeah. I'm on my grind. TGIF. <laughs> the grind includes Friday. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. So, but that is the natural progression, honestly. I think, f- and I yeah. was the same way. Like when I got out of when I got out of playing hockey back in Canada, what got me out of it, other than sucking, was um, <laughs> was hey, the fact you're that not good enough. Pretty much, but was the fact that I really enjoyed training for size and honestly. You know, 18, 19 years old, right. having fucking 16 inch arms. Forget about it. You know I mean? <laughs> your your MSN message is blowing up every time you sign in. <laughs> Come on, I mean, I'm in so many top friends this on MySpace. <laughs> fucking get at me, right? That was the most 90s thing I've ever heard. <laughs> um, but no, so I think that's usually the natural transition, right? Yeah, is going to be you're going to go from conventional sports as a kid. You're going to age out because you suck. And then if you're lucky, honestly, I think if you're lucky, you find a passion for lifting that'll sustain you the rest of your life. Now, yeah. the first and sometimes last, some people, you know, it, it's the old age old story of, you know, I played Div 1 ball and I came, came out and the guy's still trying to crush it in the glory days. He's like that uncle from Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> like, bet you throw that, throw that, you should be able to throw a pigskin a quarter mile. It's like, n- no. <laughs> um, okay, but sure. You want to keep benching 225 to 90 degrees in the elbows for the rest of your life. You, you can do that. Um, so that initial transition, I mean, if kids that are listening, hopefully you know, you're under parental supervision. But um, what would you say in hindsight from transferring from one thing to the other is the biggest downfall that people run into? Um, not learning how to do things correctly from the beginning. Um, a lot of times – and I was actually talking to a high school strength and conditioning coach the other day, and he has... You chuckled a bit when you said that. I hope he doesn't listen to the show. <laughs> no, I'm just uh, laughing because of the situation, and it's it's a very real situation. When you're 18 years old, you know everything. Yeah. Yeah, you I can't be told anything. Um, that's definitely 18, true. 18, I've been there since I was like four years old, dude. Are you serious? <laughs> no, well, I agree, but, yeah. But, um, so working with that population, he works with two football teams. All right, varsity and JV. JV. And then varsity is 6 and 0, JV is 0 and 6. Huh. So he's working with both ends of the spectrum here, and neither one will listen to a damn word he says because the 6 and 0, they know everything. 6 and 0, bro. Yeah. 0 and 6, they don't give a fuck. No. So, <laughs> so the biggest mistake I'd say is um is is the ego, right? You, you, you know, you're fresh out of high school. You just did awesome in your last playoff. I don't know, whatever the fuck happens with sports. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, but you got um, some at prom, dude. That's I know. That's serious. what it's all Come about, basically. Uh, <laughs> that's that's your um, your criteria for having a good season. Um, but <laughs> um, it's it's taking the ego out of it um, and having someone there that actually knows something. They can teach you how to get into these things the right way so you can have some longevity and actual progress in whatever you're getting. I would say, too, because some people maybe find weights a little bit later in life and, you know, they'll go football and then they'll play, like, flag football with their friends on weekends and they stick with sport a little bit longer. Understanding that sports are not balanced. They're anything but. And understanding based off the sport that you're playing – the imbalance that's going to come with. And this is going to be a true of transition regardless if that's conventional sports. Like if you're a pitcher and you're, you know, you're on the mound, you know, a couple hundred pitches a day from the time you're six, you grow faster than most of your friends, show a lot of promise, play triple A ball. You got to understand the, what you're going in with when you give up baseball or you start embarking on weight training, Mm -hmm. um, where your imbalances are going to lie based on the sport that you play. Like your development, your movement development from the time you were a child is going to be so skewed from a symmetry standpoint. And that's not, and when I say symmetry, I don't mean top to bottom, left to right, um, strength, stability. It's, it's everything, right? It's everything that can be or should be homeostatic and balanced. And to be a high performer, you don't necessarily, being balanced is only a, you're trying to steer the, the, the spectrum to balance only enough to steer it away from injury that's all it is like to be a good pitcher you're gonna need good external rotation of your shoulder you're not you don't want balance i don't give a fuck if your left shoulder can't externally rotate like your pitching shoulder doesn't matter i also the goal is to not have them to be symmetrical or to get my right to have or my throwing shoulder to have less either because i fucking need that thing you know paint in the third baseline when i'm coming over the mound because that's going to generate the most torque and I can throw the fastest. The only goal in that is 
you train enough GPP, you train enough balance and symmetry so that the, the needle doesn't run down the spectrum to injury. So understanding that morphologically even, like your structure as you've developed has changed. So you need to m take that into consideration when loading barbells. So progression of like unilateral movements, dumbbell stuff. Really try and pick apart and assess your starting point based off of you can be a physically active kid but and b do sports, but you are not in a good position to start loading barbells. Um, so I think that would be something. And as we cross over in between uh, uh, conventional sports to barbell sports, now as we kind of bifurcate into the realm of barbell sports, there's going to be imbalances. Like let's talk CrossFit to Olympic weightlifting. Sure, there's some carryover, but there's a lot of your training that you've had to just jettison altogether. Absolutely. I haven't seen a fucking weight vest a concept to ski erg <laughs> there's been no <laughs> toes to bar in like how was that transition yeah. in your training i did some toes to bar yesterday <laughs> oh, fuck that could be a gold star you could do a lot of palooza are we doing we doing that again no recruit them someone no. wants a ringer <laughs> bring it on <laughs> no please no no like five mile runs at 5 30 in the morning god that was yeah, brutal that was i just terrible. had to wake up for it i went back to bed i know um but Bloody. no so that transition between olympic weightlifting or a crossfit to olympic weightlifting yeah um, it's a weird transition because even when I teach people both of these things, I'll teach them weightlifting for weightlifting and I'll teach them weightlifting for CrossFit. What's the main difference? Um, intent, uh, weightlifting for weightlifting, you, it's a one rep max sport. Your, your, the measure of how well you're doing in that sport is how heavy can you lift for one rep. Weightlifting for CrossFit is more so a speed versus efficiency kind of thing and it energy expenditure versus checking the box of did you get the thing done so it's a lot less i mean the how is just different how you snatch that barbell um is going to be very different if you're doing it one time as heavy as you can as opposed to 30 times as fast as you can and a lot of times the the it's i mean i've said it a million times crossfit does bastardize the olympic lifting movements um this just in breaking well, news yeah no shit yeah it's well, i mean like they're not movements that are meant to be done for reps or time it, eh, I, eh, that you I said it all <laughs> i think there is a benefit for doing them for reps and time and w in weightlifting and crossfit they are used both in the same way um in that capacity to to increase your work capacity right so it's it might look a little different in weightlifting than it does in crossfit um, it might be, you know, triples in the snatch and weightlifting as opposed to I don't 20 know. cleans yeah. at 95 pounds. Touch and go reps wow. or something yeah, in, in CrossFit. Uh, so the, the intent there is the same, but the end goal is different. Mm. Um, so the snatch and the clean jerk are fantastic in for training motor recruitment pattern in a way that's going to generate force. So force production. Um, they're really good for training balance, uh, flexibility, um, strength, all these different things that, that transfer over to very athletic things. Um, but the way they're done in CrossFit, you basically, if that's your base, you basically have to unlearn all of that and learn how to do it for weightlifting. And so here's the thing, and this is the question I've probably got the most when it comes to crossing over, is when powerlifters give up, they go to Olympic weightlifting. It's like the golf. It's like the golf. It's like, all right, we're done playing hockey. Now we just want to kind of swing a club in a field with nice scenery. <laughs> all right, we're going to we're gonna go to Olympic, which, I mean, they get kicked in the head because they don't have the mobility, the stability, the right. strength. They don't have the recruitment. They don't, they don't have the ability to deal with, like, latent neurological noise. And I think that's <laughs> – no, and we'll think about it, right? Like, there's so many moving parts to a snatch. There's so right. much coordination. That's just a different level of neurological adaptation. Like, it's – it's taking muscles to make movements and that integration there's so much background noise neurologically to keeping things in the right position where it's like even when you first learn a proper powerlifting squat there's so many to your peanut brain there's so many cues like wait what i have to like keep my shoulder blades like down and like my chest up but not too far but, but don't forget about your knees oh you're coming up on your toes and it's like when you learn it and, and it's second nature, you're just like, oh, all right. You could, you could wake up, put a, put a gun to your head, and you can fucking do a perfect rep every single time. But in the inception of it, you're like, 
like you'll you'll forget about like your like you'll forget to breathe one rep and you're like well wow, that was so weird it's like yeah because you didn't breathe because you're worried about your knees and your back or your hips or something yeah where there's it's that times a hundred with olympic lifting so yeah. i think that same people think that curve of learning how to do a power lift properly like a cueing a proper bench press or a squat or a deadlift is there's a coordination piece that's there that uh, that isn't appreciated to the outsider then when they get kind of immersed into it and they understand the ramifications of when that's not attended to they go oh, okay wow that's really a lot to this and it's like yeah dude i've had like phd dissertation level conversations about like an eccentric load on a squat and like <laughs> tempo and relative joint positions like there's a lot to it if you really want to look at it when the goal is force production right yeah. But I just think when Olymp when powerlifters, they have mastered the three lifts, and mastered, and I think everyone's kind of in constant pursuit of that, and yeah. they move over to Olympic weightlifting, it's not like learning to squat the first time, right? Like, no. give me two weeks with someone, and we squat them a few times, or front squat, high bar, and then into low, in like a mindful progression. It's very hard to put together the pieces, and then to ha deal with that coordination factor to an ex like a 10 exponent, um, when it comes to Olympic weightlifting. Yep. So, because here's the, the thing you mentioned is Olympic weightlifting for CrossFit is different than Olympic weightlifting for um, Olympic weightlifting. Mm -hmm. Deadlifting for powerlifting is very different than deadlifting for Olympic weightlifting or CrossFit. Yeah, and absolutely. That's where, I, well, that's where I see the most of it because it's like uh, the idea, because you guys are triple extension because that weight's going to end up over your head where there's no fucking way in hell the weight I deadlift is ending up anywhere past – it's rolling out of my fingertips by the time it gets to my yeah. waist. So I think in crossing over from um, powerlifting to Olympic weightlifting or Olympic lift weightlifting to powerlifting, that's going to be where I see the most trip up is in the deadlift. The squat stuff, you can get someone low bar. They, they kind of lose the rib cage. They, they try and stay real upright chest, like teaching them, teach them the role of like the erectors in powerlifting because I think you use them differently. Um, you use them more as extensors or anti – like you use them as anti-flexors from an extended position where we use them as anti-flexors from a flex position. There's a lot more thoracic movement or thoracic flexion in um, powerlifting than there is in Olympic weightlifting. Yes. So I think that's something that has to be considered when you're making the transition to one or the other. You're not going to be able to pull like fucking KK if you're trying to go do a snatch. You're also not going to be able to pull, you know, like uh, – you're not going to be able to sit on your heels before every deadlift with your fucking Olympic weightlifting shoes when you're trying to go into powerlifting. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think both of them can be a very good base for each other. Um, it just takes some intent and a very well-rounded athlete to go back and forth between both with ease. I would say powerlifting does. M Here's the hard part. What's harder to, what's harder to train in a short period of time, strength or uh, coordination? Um, you're missing a big one though, flexibility, mobility. Okay, all right. Um, yeah. so a long that. time, you know, power lifter, they're forced into this very anterior shoulder dominant. What are we, fucking gargoyles? What was that? Yes. No, I get what you're yes, saying. Yes, you are. <laughs> I could, I, I could get under. I couldn't get under a clean, but I could get under a snatch. Or sorry, I reversed that. I couldn't a get snatch. under. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. If you it doesn't matter how much weight you can get to here. Yeah. It's how much weight you can lock out here and yeah. stand up. So, I mean, a 200-kilo mismatch is worse Ooh. than a 20-kilo made snatch. Yeah. Right? So, um, that's, in my mind, the biggest thing. Because you have such a surplus of strength moving from powerlifting into Olympic lifting. Um, the coordination, it's just repetition. Right? You can learn coordination a lot quicker than you can learn strong. It takes yeah. a long fucking and time. And that's the thing. Strong. Strength is a skill, and that's what people don't uh, they don't appreciate. Strength either. is a skill that takes very repetitive, um, long duration uh, to obtain. I don't think our bodies want to be strong to past a certain extent. You, yeah. The, the extra physical physiological loads that we put ourselves under, because I think the first thing, the first drop off you'll see when you start to detrain is strength. Right, like yeah. you can maintain relative muscle mass and body composition fairly well if your diet's where it needs to be. The neurological, like, and again, I think it just comes down to this latency. Like, how much, like, when I lift my arm to pick up a water bottle, my body's like, uh, <laughs> get a straw. Like, fuck. Like, why do I have to move? Why does this thing need to be this size? Right? Like, it's not, and not all that it's like overly big. But if I didn't train like I trained, like, the first thing I would do is lose strength. 
Yeah. Because it's like that's going to be one of the drivers that's going to help you maintain body composition. But that falls off first because your body's like, okay, neurological capacity is usually our rate limiter for everything. Right. That's what you'll notice if you drive down the highway and you're talking on your cell phone and you roll your windows up, you're actually more focused on the road. You ever notice that? What? So think about it. So I like have no idea what neurological you're neurological capacity is like pretty much a rate limiter to, to perform anything. Right. Mm-hmm. And neurological capacity isn't just output, it's input and output, right? So like if you're texting and driving, for example, and the music on is and the windows down, that's a lot of latent noise and latent noise that you're still processing. Like someone could drive by you and say your name and you'd still hear it. Right. They're like you're constantly scanning this input for anything relevant to your situation. Right. So if you're texting and driving, not that we advocate texting and driving, but let's be serious. Um, if you put your windows up and turn your music off, you're less likely to get into an accident. And I'm not saying that that's the safest way to go All about right. it. But so because you're just dampening the input. Yeah. You have less input. And because neurological capacity is finite. Right where like that'll be your rate limiter functionally. So I just think it, when you can clear that up and, and or in your case, train it because there's so much latent noise that goes on to the relative joint positions and the coordination factor that goes in with, no, shaking your head? It's It should be a very controlled movement. So it's it's taking what may seem like latent noise and controlling it. Yeah, and I'm saying that's t- that expends a lot of energy. That takes time. Yes. Yes, so that's um, kind of the coordination aspect to it. Yeah. Definitely. And that's, I mean, I want a big whiteboard up here so we can do a muscle dot graph so of, like, good. You can do it with your hands. You can do it with your hands. All go, right. Go. Let's talk see if we talk, can do talk, talk to the so people at home. So Dude, so well, you're there. Be there. All right. We're going to draw a graph with a couple different curves. Okay. We'll say one of them is, um, so this is when you are detraining, right? Okay. So if you say you stop training on day zero, and then from there is kind of the time span. The decrease in coordination, so let's say coordination starts here, it's going to drop off. You get quick. rusty. Yeah, you're going to get yeah. rusty. But when you start training again, it's going to peak really quick. Yeah. Right? So you can make relatively quick changes in coordination either direction. And that's coordination, not strength, but it'll express themselves the same. Yes, coordination can be a limiting factor on strength. So strength, say you're here, it's going to be a, a more gradual decline, yeah. but it's also going to be, after it goes down, a more gradual incline. Yeah. Right. Um, flexibility is kind of the same way. I don't really know the relationship and I think it's different depending person to person situation. Um, but say your flexibility is, you know, this is a high level flexibility. It's going to I think it maintains a little bit longer, maybe than strength. But as it goes down, it's going to probably take a similar shape of that curve of the strength. OK. To as, as how you get it back and how it goes. Um, so that's kind of my mind looking at these different factors as we're approaching that and then approaching uh, a change of of training style now i guess do you think there is a benefit for someone like so the the main driver behind this was someone asking about power building or power bodybuilding which is a high hybrid and and i'm going to air quote the term um between uh powerlifting and bodybuilding okay now obviously if you take a look at some of the better bodybuilders in the world they're not necessarily the strongest guys. Phil Heath is not exactly showing up at my fucking meets and kicking my ass. It's not a hammer strength chest press machine <laughs> competition, <laughs> right? Or a hack squat with wraps and a belt on competition. It's squat bench dead. Not to say, he, you know, maybe he's a poor example. Someone like Luke Sandow. So he's this guy out of the UK. Fucking crazy strong. Jordan Peters, another guy out of the UK. He'll be five weeks out from a, a show, a bodybuilding show, and he'll pull 330 for reps. That's 727 pounds for reps at 5% body fat. Like how, and this is something that I've been toying with lately is like how much is a minimum necessary input from each system, whether that maybe be coordination, um, uh, metabolic or anaerobic strength, mobility, stability. How, what is, what is a, what is your middle of that? Those we'll do like Venn diagrams or something (laughs) like what is the middle of that Venn diagram? Right. Like what is your operative goal? Like, who are you at your highest virtue in your sport? Are you Arnold Schwarzenegger? Are you bodybuilding? OK, well, if you put that avatar in the center, you need to then wave in increasing amounts of frequency or duration or repetition or whatever of of things of these. OK, how much is my rate limiter going to be metabolic? Right. Like if my work capacity sucks, I can't be a bodybuilder. You can't like if you're winded, if you're some fat powerless who gets winded after, bro, eight reps is cardio. It's like, fuck, shut up. <laughs> Just shut your mouth. <laughs> that metabolic 
part is going to yeah. slow you down if you if the thing in the middle is Schwarzenegger and bodybuilding is your goal. So understanding like okay, how much of this do I have to wave in? Uh, understanding this is all driven neurologically for the most part that each one of these is held to a total finite value that can't be altered. So it's like each one of these is is 25%, let's say. So how much time and energy of this resource of this finite resource can I wave in? So I can make continual progress. So work capacity isn't a rate limiter. So I can actually have enough endurance to have a lot of time under tension and to be able to cause mechanical stress so I look like Schwarzenegger, right? And then obviously a waving piece inside of that is gonna be isolation work. Training muscles in isolation is gonna be the largest contributing factor to all three. But then the coordination, mobility, flexibility piece is like, okay, if I just train stuff in isolation, likely if there's no integration and there's no functionality and there's no mobility and there's no stability, that'll decrease my uh, overall goal or inhibit my overall goal of looking like Schwarzenegger. There has to be um, kind of a, a systematic use of these muscles in isolation together to make movements. At some point, there has to be, whether your goal is injury prevention or whether it is a high neural output um, and that's kind of more the strength piece. And then, okay, how much, how much heavy shit do I have to do, so I can use this main piece here to create more mechanical stress when I'm doing isolation work, right? And so this four-piece Venn diagram is kind of the answer to whatever your question is or where you're trying to transition from. It's like, okay, wh who's my avatar? If you're going from CrossFit to Olympic weightlifting. It's like okay, you take Matt Fraser out and you put you know Dimitri Koklov or whatever Klokov <laughs> in there. It's like okay, wh where am I missing of these four pieces? What does my current training look like? Looks like okay, the coordination stuff is pretty high gymnastics work. We'll have to change that, but that'll likely stay somewhere around the same. The endurance conditioning work. Uh, my work output's pretty good. I can actually scale some of that back. We're gonna wave in more of the strength and more of the and the coordination stuff, the isolation work, as much as minimally necessary to maintain this progress um, unfettered due to injury. Right. So I think that's a really good way to look at it. This like this fucking kaleidoscope of four circles of stimulus adaptation and what's the minimum necessary. Understand too, like in the power bodybuilder, your goal. For the most part, at the basic gym bro warrior status is mediocrity, <laughs> right? Like you're not really in it to get strong and you're not really in it to get super lean, right? And I understand, you know, being some show, some go. I definitely get that. Um, but at some point, if you're uncertain of who your, your avatar is in the middle of that, um, there's a way to program for it. I would say power builder is likely the most complementary of all the carryovers, like Olympic weightlifter powerlifter you're going to be leaving a lot of potential on the board in one of the two arenas right yeah 100 yeah, percent agree i think just looking at the whole say everyone that works out for any sort of purpose power builder is probably going to be the majority of those yeah, it's a gym bro it's the yeah 24 hour fitness yeah um, i'm coming here i want to look good i want to get a little strong so i do some deadlifts i probably squat like crap but whatever yeah and of course they're bench pressing yeah, of course. That's <laughs> the that's the make of a man, dude. That's what does. <laughs> Fuck out well, here. no, I, but that is the common, you know, what do you bench is, you know, that's the yardstick for those who matter, right? Yeah. And that's like when you're standing in line at the grocery store, that's what you get asked. Where it's like, oh, what do you bench, bro? It's like, oh, the fact you ask that means it's you don't know. Like, it's the wrong question. I bench press this week. Did you actually? Oh, my God. That's, uh, yeah. if you ever want to, like, if you're ever in distress or something and someone's kidnapped, <laughs> like, if you're ever in a trunk somewhere, like, when you're in a trunk somewhere, just text me, bro, I'm benching right now. Like, oh, fuck, he's not okay. Where is he? We need to low jack his phone. Someone's got Junta. Oh, shit. Um, no, and I think it's, the, it's something to, you know, listen, if you got wife, you got kids, you want to stay in shape power building i think even outside the gym what that'll drive if the goal is aesthetics again i'm not one to say that high performance in anything is healthy right no, absolutely not. and that's where a lot of people are like oh if you focus on health first performance will get no it very well fucking not what, what the, would you read that on the underside of the lid of your vegan fucking protein get out of here get out of here. or cricket protein have you seen this <laughs> i've heard of it why yeah. is it okay that we're mass slaughtering crickets now <laughs> like why is no one spoken up about this like new craze <laughs> oh but, but to me it's like listen you got to pick a street like if you want to get into this and you yeah. want you want to compete at the american open or you want to you know 
get a total past a certain point in powerlifting. If you want to step on stage as a bodybuilder, you could wave about five years off your life out the gate. Like, all right, here's what your first six months of training is going to look like. Here's yeah. how much is going to suck. Here's how much is going to affect the rest of your life, b- socially, psychologically, physiologically. Mm-hmm. If you want to be a high performer, you need to be willing to make. And I don't even like the word sacrifice. Right? I was up at 4.45 this morning to train. And it wasn't a sacrifice. It wasn't fucking Instagram story worthy. I was just, get your ass up because I like it. Like, I, 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 would, I would rather do that than sleep. And it's not some, like, you know, self-aggrandizing fucking agenda. It's just like, yeah, I like to lift weights, so I'm going to do that. And it's like, that's got to be your driver. And that helps. Maybe that's the best way to do it is find out what you're passionate about because it's not going to maintain, right? Like, weightlifting got your attention. Yeah. And more so than, like, Kip, 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 kip things, kip, kip, kip dips. Roll with it. Kipping with dips. It. Am yeah. I doing it? Am I doing it? <laughs> Fuck. Um, but no. So that got your attention. It's what you're passionate about. That's what you know makes your the hair in your arm stand up in the morning when you think about it. So it's like, all right, well, fucking yeah, do that. Um, but then understand if you want to continue to do that and you want to do it at a high level, how to wave in other facets of training, um, based off like what people rarely don't get stronger because they can't get stronger. If that makes sense. It's like people beat their fucking heads against the wall trying to get stronger by loading more weight on the bar. It's like, listen, we're talking about force production. That's that's the base tenet of strength. There are ways to load force without loading weight, right? Like we can make lightweight difficult if we change how much force and based off of like the angles that we load or the exercise selection or the exercise order. So like it, it's not like, wow. Is is it, was like it raining? Barbie? Is it, it raining, Barbie man? The something? thing is, I think this will only get picked up on the video podcast. So <laughs> when we have these like tangential moments of like, what the fuck song is playing right now? Mark got real mad when I got Van Halen wrong for Rush the other <sighs> Rush for Van Halen. It's like, sorry, man. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, um, we got to get him mic'd up. He's like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Rather than you relaying the message for yeah, him. Yeah. Um, totally forgot what I was talking about. Oh, uh, waving in um, others like adaptation. Uh, yeah. keep you driving towards the main goal so yeah absolutely. Um, now power building and may- maybe i want to focus on this a little bit more where do you see for someone maybe coming off of sports or no sports at all like the general gym bro maybe like three pieces of advice other than don't curl in front of the fucking dumbbell rack or shallow's gonna smack you in the head <laughs> three pieces of advice for a power builder to maintain that as a sustainable way of training long term um first Focus on full range of motion, okay. moving through the fullest range of motion that you can in safe and stable positions. That's going to be a big thing for longevity. 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 Longevity with an eye. <laughs> okay. All right. I was going to let it go, but I'm glad you caught yourself. Uh, the, the caffeine's wearing off. Okay. You're going to need some more. All right. Um, so moving through a full range of motion, um, getting in some sort of accessory work that will complement what you're doing. Um, so – that inquire that requires a little bit of brain power to take a look be like okay this is what's going wrong or if you have some sort of uh imbalance and stability kind of figuring out what that is or getting someone's help to figure out what that is and then catering your accessory work to that um and then if if longevity is your goal diet is huge um just make sure that you're managing inflammation and you're feeding your body in a way that's going to lend itself to your goals yeah i think if someone's t- embarking on this endeavor and i think G- gpp can almost be chalked up to power building for guys anyways um and i, I don't want to be sexist but that's what you're going to see in, in the gym right you're going to see the mid-30s guy who went out to marshall's and like all right what do people wear when they work out in 1987 and it's like when they were listening to this shit to work out and then <laughs> they, they come in with like workout clothes on. There's nothing that says you don't actually lift than workout clothes. <laughs> like there's some Adidas yeah. cooling technology shirt. It's like you're not even going to sweat. Why the fuck are you worried about that? <laughs> it's like I got the same fucking Metallica fade to black shirt. I've been lifting since I was 18. Like, but that crowd is going to be like, all right, I'm going to do lap pull downs and bench press until my shoulder impingement gets so bad that I can't put a shirt on, and then I'm going to go ask a real adult how to fix this. <laughs> it's like specificity <laughs> would be everything for me, yeah. um, and understanding like specific training to counteract the unbalanced sport that has been your life up till this point where we're going to concentrate load into a single session, a single hour of your week. Because that's where people get tripped up. It's like 
not necessarily that their exercise selection or even their execution is bad. It's just fucking throwing kerosene on an open flame of dysfunction. Like you move like shit. Your job has you on working on a computer like 37 hours a day to uh, evoke a Juntaism. <laughs> but it's uh, and then all of a sudden this this focused bout of high force input in your body, regardless of really how you're executing it is just lighting up signals on the dashboard. So I would say specificity to your own morphology or your own dysfunction would be huge as far as exercise selection and progression. Like maybe a barbell bench press is not the best place to start if you've never lifted a weight, right? Um, understanding the the 13, I mean, research says 13 weeks, but in your initial stages of training, how that linear progression of strength, that motor unit recruitment, kind of that old adage that's been sticking around research for a while, that you're not necessarily getting stronger, you're just utilizing the strength you have, then establishing strategies to overcome those plateaus, right? And that's not gonna be supplementation, that's just gonna be improvement, improving movement mechanics. Mm -hmm. um, and that's gonna be true, again, of, of anything, of any crossover style of programming, is you need to look at it through that lens of appraisal, of like where am I at? What dysfunctions have I established from, you know, working uh, seven hours a day, or eight hours a day, 10 hours a day for seven days a week for the past 15 years, what imbalance has that left me with and where am I trying to go? Or I've been a proficient powerlifter for X number of years, now I'm trying to throw shit over my head. Where are my limitations based off where I've come from and where I'm trying to go? Um, so getting very clear and, and aware and unbiased assessment of your starting point and a very clear vision of what your final goal is. And then either if you can't do it, have someone help you reverse engineer between those two points. Because um, it's not the straight line that people think it is. Like it. Dig it. Dig awesome. It. All Dig right. It. Um, so that's crossover between sport, mm -hmm. power building, crossover to Olympic weightlifting, Olympic weightlifting to powerlifting and back. Um, but yeah, check out Leonard Jack Productions. Um, we, why don't we lead off episodes with like telling people to leave reviews? I feel like <laughs> it's only I our parents. Forget. Okay, I think we forget. I that'd be a good. I that'd be a safe forget. assumption. All right, uh, head over to iTunes, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube. Uh, if some of you guys want us to talk about, hit us up in the comment section. Um, Instagram at RX Radio at Red White and Jordan White spelled W I T E uh, at the underscore Muscle underscore Doc, um, and then check out Kyle Lundy at Lunderjack Music or Lunderjack Productions on Instagram and on the internets. And until next time. All right, we'll see you guys.